Hi everyone, today I'm very excited because uh, I'm gonna start a new series of videos about dark table and travel photography. My name is Steph and I run the travel photography website called Mel365. And today I'm gonna show you all you need to know to start using dark table to organize and improve your photos. <music> Darktable is an amazing software to organize and edit your photos and if you are familiar with Lightroom you will find many similarities. However, Darktable is much more powerful, it's free of charge and open source and it works on Mac, Windows and few flavors of Unix. Here I am into the interface of Darktable. Now one thing I want to say is that this video is not about comparing Lightroom to Darktable. I'm actually organizing a video for that which will be published soon so I really suggest to you to subscribe and tick that little bell in case you want to get a notification as soon as published. This video is about understanding if Darktable is a good tool for you to organize and edit your photos. Let's jump straight away into the interface which is divided in views. Uh, you have a light table view and that's where we start and then you have other views here on the right side. The light table view is where you organize your photos and you have a central part of your monitor where you see all of the photos that you have into your dark table. On the left side is where you import and you create collections of your photo and on the right side is where you you organize and you do the first improvement to your photos. Let's go on the left side, easy busy. You can import either one or more images from here or the full folder. And that's what I usually do. I put all of my photos from one shooting into a folder and then I import it straight away from here, very easy. I have then the possibility to see all of the photos from the collect images module. And in this case, I have imported a couple of shooting I've done into my photography workshops around Melbourne. I've organized this photo in two folders that you see here, but there are different ways to see the photos. You can see, for example, um, based on the camera that you are shooting with. In my case, I can see the photos with an a A7 III and with an A7R II. The good thing about this module is that you can actually create collections. And uh, for example, you can see all of the photos that I have done with A7 III in uh, the months of January and February with that particular lens, and that can be really useful. Uh, if we go down to the module, so we have than the recently used collections and then another important module is the image information and um, this is important from the XF file and uh, changes based on where your mouse is which is great because you can see straight away all of the information into a simple module. Let's get into the central part of the video and that's where all of your photos are. You can scroll obviously back and forward and you can decide here below how how many photos do you want for each row uh, so you can go down to one up to believe it or not 25 which is probably a bit too much unless you have a gigantic monitor I guess other interesting things that you can do is um, you can see them full screen with a W button so if I move for example on this photo I push W and I can see straight away into my full screen you can also have a view of the focus points which is absolutely gorgeous. Uh, so if I go to this photo for example and if I do Ctrl W uh, I have into this uh, red areas the focus points of um, my photo if you are not aware of uh, all of the uh, shortcuts if you go for example in this photo you want to know the shortcuts you press the button h and you can see all of the shortcuts that you can use in the photo from the rating to the photo the color that you want to give so it's very simple and you don't need to go back and forward with a manual but let's go on the right side of the photos where you find the modules to organize and do the first improvements to your photos. So you have a module to select the photos and you have another module here where you can do the first actions on the photos like for example create an HDR and uh, let's bypass the history stack by the, for the moment and we go to the styles where you can give a style to your photo for example more beach style or more uh, sunset style or more dreamy styles. You can uh, create these styles by yourself or you can import from 
other photographers and there are honestly plenty of them on the internet for example if i want to give a black and white style to this photo i double click on the style and here it is the photo in black and white if i don't like ctrl z and i go back to the original photo and then we can obviously fill in more information into the metadata uh, file which is the title and the description of the photo and we can tag the photo and this is one of the most important thing i suggest everyone to do otherwise you know after a while you can't find back your photos and uh, then you can geotag your photos and finally you can export your photos in the way a format that you like from a jpeg to tiff and plenty of file formats and now comes the most exciting part of dark table which is the dark room you can edit your photo which is in the central part of the video down in the bottom of your video uh, you have a theme role and that's where you can select the photo that you can work on for example i select this photo now let's start with the modules on the left side uh, and skip snapshots for the moment we jump straight away to the history where we can see all of the editing that we have done to the photo as quite often happens uh, we never know if actually we have improved our photos but you can always go back and you can see step by step uh, what you have improved and if you are happy with it another possibility is to use the snapshot uh, which is more effective in my opinion and you take a snapshot of uh, the last change for example and then you go into the history and if you go down to this point you can see how you have improved the photo after the history we have a duplication manager where you can create virtual copies of your photos a color picker to see what color is actually one point of your photo we can work again on the tagging but i prefer to do that in the light table and that's where it should be done and uh, you have again the image information that we saw into light table uh, view and finally we have a mask manager in case uh, we want to work only on one part of a photo for example if i want just to work on all of these green uh, lights and i want to make it a little bit darker probably i'm gonna do a video onto the mask later on on the right side of your photo what you see is the histogram here on the top uh, which tells you basically uh, how overexpose underexpose and it gives you also information on the mid tones and now let's get into the editing workspace which is here on the right bottom um, this is where you can see all of the adjustments and edits that you can do to your uh, photos and they are organized by groups uh, so we have a group with a tone we have a group for the color we have a group for the correction and we have a group for the effects and everything that you have done it goes in into the active groups these are the modules that i have used for this photo and these are the modules that obviously you see into the history here on the left how many adjustments can i do to the photo a lot if you go down to the bottom here you can see there are about 70 modules 70 adjustments that you can do does it mean that you have to use them all absolutely not these are a lot and can be actually somehow overwhelming and intimidating especially if you start using dark table and in this respect i suggest you really to start with um, um, the basic group where you find the modules that uh, you can use to do a basic adjustment to your photo and uh, from there you can favor the tools that you use the most in my workflow for example whenever i import the photo i check if i can do a white balance um, then i do a lens correction i check the perspective in case i do photos of building and so on and so forth i guess uh, you will need a few days to build your favorite group but after that it will be easy busy because uh, you can go and activate or deactivate the module and tweak it a little bit and you get uh, what you want that's it about the dark room view and uh, we have another three views we can go through them easily i start here from the bottom which is the tethering and that's where you connect your camera straight away to dark table in case you want to import the photos into dark table and usually you do that when you do studio photography and you have a slideshow to see the photos in a slideshow obviously and then you have map where you can see the photos into a map all of my photos are not geotagged so you will not see the photos into the map and you can also select uh, different sources
Microsoft Maps. If you don't like the Google Map and maybe you like more the open street, then you go into it. And that's it about this video. I hope you enjoyed it and uh, I really appreciate if you put a like. And uh, if you want to see more videos about Darktable, I suggest you to subscribe to the channel and uh, tick that little bell so you can get a notification whenever I post a new one. Thank you so much for this video and uh, I'll see you soon.